SAMR Explained. Ready to learn about SAMR? We're going to focus on the five W's to help you learn all about it. So let's get started. Who created SAMR? Well, it was made by Dr. Ruben Puentadura. He's the founder and president of Hippasis, a consulting firm in Western Massachusetts. He regularly explores mobile computing, digital storytelling, learning analytics, and educational gaming. Well, what is it exactly? SAMR stands for Substitution, Augmentation, Modification, Redefinition. It's a model designed to help educators integrate technology into teaching and learning. The model aims to enable teachers to design, develop, and integrate digital learning experiences that lead to high levels of achievement for students. So, in other words, it's a model used to select, use, and evaluate technology to use in your school or classroom. S stands for substitution. At this level, technology acts as a direct tool substitute with no functional change. Teachers are using technology to replace traditional tools. For example, instead of having your students write out an essay by hand, you allow them to use Microsoft Word or Google Docs. The task of writing the essay is exactly the same, but the students are using a technology tool instead of a writing utensil. A stands for augmentation. Here, technology acts as a direct tool substitute with some functional improvement. For example, when students create an assignment on Google Docs, instead of having to print it out and share it with their teacher, they can share it via email. Or instead of taking a paper and pencil quiz, students complete a quiz on Google Forms. Students receive immediate feedback on the score. M stands for modification. In this part of the model, technology allows for significant task redesign. This is the first step in the model where the traditional tasks happening in the classroom begin to transform. For example, adding comments and collaborating on Google Docs provides immediate feedback for students. R stands for redefinition. Technology allows for the creation of new tasks previously inconceivable. You'll see a lot of collaboration, discussions, and creating with technology in this part of the model. For example, a classroom is asked to create an ebook on a curriculum topic. Groups are assigned to work on subtopics. Heavy collaboration occurs, research is conducted using various sources, and students use an app to create the ebook with embedded videos, photographs, and audio. The final ebook is posted on the classroom website for parents, administrators, and others to view. Well, where should the SAMR model be used? Any place where learning occurs, such as the classroom, school, or library. Well, when should teachers refer to the SAMR model? Anytime you're planning for your lessons, reflecting on previous lessons, or when a new piece of equipment or software is placed in your classroom. Well, why should teachers refer to the SAMR model? Kathy Schrock created a great infographic to show the comparison between the SAMR model and Bloom's taxonomy. Essentially, students should work their way up the model, with the highest goal being that students advance their learning in a transformational manner. As they work their way up the model, students are using higher order cognitive skill levels. Here's some apps that correlate with each level in the SAMR model. Please note that some of these apps could fit into more than one category.